there. Didn't see ya. I was just practicing my strawberry ocarina here. Hello everyone! I am back and I made a strawberry ocarina. <laughs> so something tragic happened um, a second ago. <laughs> it's not gonna fit back on it without some crazy glue and it went downstairs to see if anyone had some and of course we don't so I'm gonna have to go buy myself some when I get a chance but anyways so yes I've made a strawberry ocarina and it's quite cute I'm very happy with it so funny story uh, this was actually supposed to be for a final project for instrumental pedagogy <laughs> just ignore my dogs while they continue to bite bite <laughs> They don't bite, they bark. Oh god. But anyways, yes, this was made for my instrumental pedagogy class. A very odd class to make this sort of thing for, as instrumental pedagogy is a class in which you learn how to teach students music. So I don't know what possessed me to choose this final project. My teacher was like, I made one once in college and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I asked to make this would she let me? And it turns out that that was very much the case. So <laughs> there's that. And originally I was actually going for a regular tenor slash or bass ocarina. Yes, it was a bass ocarina that I was trying to make. And uh, that didn't go so well. I have the clips of um, my attempt in this video for you. So you can check that out in a few. But I included my fail because we cannot make progress unless there's some type of failure involved, at least some of the time. That was definitely the case at this point. Because <laughs> clearly, this was a success. And it ended up being shaped as a strawberry. I think this matches my aesthetic far more than the monstrosity that I had. Which you will soon see in a second. Horrendous, if I do say so myself. Fun fact, and I don't know if this was a wise idea, but I ended up using regular like firing clay. Like this clay is supposed to be technically fired, but because I don't have a kiln and I wasn't going to dig a ditch into my backyard and set fire to the ground, I decided I just take the L on this one and paint it. It's still functional, clearly. I mean, <laughs> I've played your theme song, my friend. Anyways, yeah, it's quite content. Oh good, my lipstick doesn't stain. Yahoo! Always a plus when you can play while looking cute. So, fully functional as you can see. It hasn't cracked on me yet, except for, you know, some of the leaves and whatnot, but that is something that I can fix with like crazy glue or something like that. <laughs> yeah, this was a lot of fun to make and I hope you guys enjoy the journey as I explain a few things along the way. We'll just get right into the video. Ta-da, here it is. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Actually, this was an ocarina that a good friend of mine gave to me a while back and I decided that I would use it as a frame of reference for the ocarina I would be creating. As I wanted this ocarina to be a base one, imagine this little blue guy as about three to four times bigger, maybe just three, I don't know. But anyways, um, I got to work on shaping this clay into a ball and then eventually into a more conical shape, which is typical of the sweet potato type of ocarina. Not sure where they got the name sweet potato from. I guess it looks kind of like a sweet potato. I don't even like sweet potatoes. Do you like sweet potatoes? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right, geez, I'm already getting off track. One thing about this clay, which by the way is called Daz clay, uh, something I found odd about it was that the texture and overall feel of it was very much like a kneaded eraser. Now this is an air dry clay so I don't know if that's just common but it was a little difficult to shape without any water on my hands first and as a result I may have inadvertently made it drier so that's fun. Um, <laughs> but afterwards I just covered this up and I was gonna take a break I said for 30 minutes and I lied it was more like two when I two hours when I came back. <laughs> Uh, and I noticed some cracking in the back, so I covered it with water like an idiot and sliced that baby up with my mother's disgusting cinnamon flavored floss. I don't even know who uses that. My mom, I guess. But anywho, um, I started making sure that everything was shaped properly. I stabbed it with a chopstick that I found and an old disgusting crusty reed that was just lying around in my room for the mouthpiece. So I stuck that in. 
and I've begun the hollowing process like an absolute moron and there's far easier ways of doing this like sticking an actual like cone inside of the ocarina and shaping the ocarina around it I didn't think of that and by the time I did it was too late it just becomes a lot uglier from here on out so I'm not even gonna bother explaining the remainder of this video just sit back relax and prepare yourselves my friends it's a journey Alright, so that was an experience we all made it through. Wonderful. <laughs> Moving on. So yeah, uh, at this point, I want to say it was about 6 p.m. at this point. Um, and yeah, the following morning at exactly 8 a.m., this project would be due and was due. <laughs> so I had to rush. I had a fire lit under my butt as I tried to get this done in enough time. Uh, not a wise decision, my friends, especially if this is a final project. Don't start it the night before. I didn't really have a choice in the matter, as finals had been kicking my butt throughout the entire week. But we're here. We made it. I'm very much alive. And by the time you guys see this, finals will have already passed. So thank God for that. Anywho, so here you can just see me dividing the clay amongst me and my sister. And I'm using this weird, like music stand slidey thing <laughs> as a rolling pin apparently we don't have one so we had to make do and here i'm just adding more clay to my little pancake and i just pat it down again to fit the ornament that i stole from my mother's christmas tree our parents christmas tree our families whatever and i'm basically just taking apart the pieces that don't fit any longer and i'm just shaping it into a ball now Once that's a good ball shape, just take your scalpel or knife, whatever, be careful kids, um, and just cut around the ball so that you can remove the ornament inside. Now this part doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as all you need to do is essentially stick it back together. Be careful not to warp or fray the edges of the clay. I would recommend just a steady hand overall. The parchment paper from around the ornament, we just put that around so the clay wouldn't stick to the ornament. Uh, turns out that some of the paper ended up <laughs> being stuck inside of the clay itself, but I don't think that's a huge problem. Um, so what we did, we just sealed it right back up, and it turns out that it ended up working just fine. 
Um, so yeah, now you've got a hollow little sphere, which is great. And now we were moving on to the mouthpiece. So I'm using the floor because the parchment paper was just moving around so much. And what you want to do is create a rectangle. Um, and now that rectangle is going to be a little bit more refined. Um, and we're just patting it down just to make sure it's all even on all sides. And so the process begins of like sticking it actually onto the ocarina base itself. So I'm carving out a little wedge shape. We want to make sure that this aligns perfectly parallel to the top of the ocarina. So as you can see here, I just kind of stuck it on. And now I'm scoring and slipping. So just score the clay, score the actual um, base itself. It's a little bit, it's pretty wet clay, so I don't think you have to worry about adding slip to it very much. Maybe just wetting the parts where you scored, um, that'll be just fine. Also, apologies for how much my head is in the frame. I don't have a viewfinder as I'm recording all this on my iPad. Um, <laughs> so apologies for that. Uh, but now I've moved on to sticking on the actual mouthpiece to the base of the ocarina. Uh, this part, you want to be careful not to squish the mouthpiece or the base at all. So what I used was a popsicle stick to smooth out the little rings of clay that I put around at the base of the mouthpiece just to attach it better so that it's stronger and it won't fall off as easy. Um, so yeah, use your popsicle stick and smooth it out. It works quite lovely and it made for a nice smoothness overall. And now I'm just measuring the mouthpiece again as I realized that it was a little bit too long. Um, what you want to do is just measure the foot of the mouthpiece with your index finger. So the length of the mouthpiece should be about the width of your index finger. So now I'm just smoothing over the tip of the mouthpiece um, to make for a nice flat surface. And then I'm going to go over the top and sketch the where I want the bevel or the whistle to be. And here's where I stick the popsicle in. So you want to be careful and make sure that the popsicle is parallel to the top. So you want it directly in the middle of your mouthpiece. Um, I know you can't really see it too well here, I'm moving a lot. But um, just make sure that it's right centered in the middle and aligned with the top. And what you're going to do here to make sure of that is to start digging out a hole for the whistle part itself. Um, I used a paper clip as I don't have any tools and I started shaping the whistle part with a scalpel and a paper clip. Um, you want to make sure that the bevel is nice and curved but not too much to where you just don't end up getting a sound at all. This part was very tedious, very scary, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but the guy who explained it, we were watching a tutorial throughout this process and he explained it really well, far better than I am right now. So if you guys want to check his video out i will link it in my description box and yeah so here i'm just hollowing it out even further if you're looking into the hole there that you have you want to make sure that it's pitch black <laughs> you did it i think it's how you blow into it Okay, so Serena, here's what you do. Hey, you basically have to clean this passageway clean inside because it? it's not smooth enough. And I'm wondering if I can get it even cleaner. You stick you got it. Good sound so far. You stick it in, and see, look that. If it comes out, comes in clean, you just keep going back and forth until a piece is like you take all the clay that's in there out. Oh. oh, it's such a cute sound! That's so cute. <gasps> yes! And it's <gasps> on the same key! <laughs> Alright, do you want to try making holes into it? <laughs> do we have to make holes? Okay, so if I screw this up, just know that I got a sound out of it first. <laughs> 
So I do end up making holes, but first I figured I'd shape my ocarina into something more me. And by that, I made it into a strawberry shape. And I thought it was really cute. Um, I've seen other ocarinas that are strawberries, but they're not this big. They're typically the ones that are in little necklace forms and they're still very cute, but I wanted a giant strawberry. <laughs> and my sister actually decided to do the same thing. So we both had two little strawberries or two pretty massive strawberries actually. <laughs> And here I'm just sticking the holes into the ocarina with my chopstick, which came in handy throughout this video. So I'm pretty grateful for them. Um, so I do end up making this a six hole ocarina. Four hole is common, but I decided to spruce it up. <laughs> I think this one could be bigger. Okay, I'm not gonna really touch this too much. I'm gonna add my little leaves and call it a day. And that was a very wise choice on my part. I didn't want to potentially ruin anything that I already had. Um, but yeah, so I got to work on the leaves and these are very fun. I just, this is a part of sculpting that I just absolutely loved. Uh, it was the finer details. Uh, so I made mine more of a realistic strawberry. Well, I say realistic, but it's still got a very cartoonish vibe. Uh, but my sister made another ocarina that was also strawberry, as I mentioned, but her leaves were far more cartoony. They were just like two little blobs of leaves on the side of the mouthpiece, and it was really cute. And she ended up painting hers as pink instead of red, which I thought was cute. I'll put the links to everything I purchased in this video in my description box. But I wanted to mention that this is actual ceramic clay, like for making ceramics, it's a low fire clay and it should be fired. But because again, I don't have a kiln, I just couldn't. So I ended up waiting till it was bone dry to actually paint it with acrylic paint. So please don't get mad. All right, so I already know that you ceramicists and sculptors out there are just fuming at me right now for using acrylic paint instead of an actual glaze. And I apologize, my friends, but I could not find a place that would fire my piece with enough time before it became bone dry and in time for my final. <laughs> so I ended up having to use this as my last resort, but it ended up working out just fine. Uh, it's still functional, as I mentioned earlier and came out cute for this video, so I'm happy. As for my final, everything was great. I ended up getting an A in the class. It's funny because everyone had these really nicely done research projects and I was just here like, ta-da, here's my ocarina. But everyone was really nice and they loved it and my teacher loved it, so that was a win. And yeah, this is the final product. I hope you guys like it. She came out super shiny and cute. Hello everyone, it is editing me here. For some reason I forgot to film an outro, but <laughs> just me things I suppose. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, first of all. Secondly, thank you for getting me over 150 subscribers, like it seems like only yesterday I had 10. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're continuing to grow and it makes me so happy to see each day that the numbers are rising little by little. And that's all thanks to you guys, so thank you. I love you so much. <laughs> And yeah, if you're new here, why not hit the subscribe button? You know, just maybe. Give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll be making new videos soon, so I hope you guys will stick around for that. And until then, I'll see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, I love you. Mwah.